Hello ladies and gents, and welcome to this rendition of Book Club. Yes, the IEB Book Club. So yeah, I've been trying to do this for quite a long time. Um, books and me are not necessarily the best of friends. Normally I'm into more of the... Uh, Audiobooks, you know, that type of thing, and, uh, not reading, but shorter books tend to be more my speed, but I figured, you know, since it's, this channel is called It's Entertainment, Bro, books are a part of entertainment, so I figured I might as well try and do some, like, book club-ish thing and uh hopefully get some feedback from you guys about books and all that type of stuff that i should read and since i have some more free time since i'm finally a college graduate oh heck yeah might as well start getting into it so the first book that i would like to talk about on this book club it i would like to submit for a review if you will is james cameron's Story of Science Fiction. Now, I actually watched this documentary. It's a kind of a documentary book tie-in for the most part. It debuted on a AMC in 2018. And uh, unfortunately, it hasn't aired since. N not that I recall. But, I mean, it's not on their streaming service, which is a real shame. You have to buy the actual documentary. And here's the thing. I, as many of you guys know, if you guys have been watching me for a long time or not, I really enjoy sci-fi, okay? Sci-fi is... I don't, I, don't, I don't know why. It's the best genre, in my opinion, there's so many ways you can take it, so many ways, you, so many things you can do with it, and so many ideas and like things you can like accomplish with it, and it can have some ramifications for the real world. Like for instance, uh, Star Trek. They they've got uh, the watches that you can talk into, and nowadays we have Apple watches that actually you can see people and talk to people and all that type of stuff. That's just one example of anything sci-fi and all that type of thing, but uh, but yeah. So for this um, book club, I will be kind of going back and forth with the documentary and the book because they're basically one and the same as that I will tell you. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so what is James Cameron's story of science fiction? Well, if you lived through the time period between Avatar 1 and Avatar 2, you'll notice, or if you're a big James Cameron fan, you'll notice that in his filmography, there is a big gap between Avatar 1 and Avatar 2, and he hasn't directed a film in between those time periods. Of course, he's, you know, produced some films, he, uh, did some other things with, like, Alita Battle Angel and all that, but that was in the works even before Avatar, the first one, came out, so it doesn't necessarily count, and, um, but yeah, if you looked in his filmography, you'll notice that he did quite a lot of documentaries and he had actual direct involvement with the creation of these documentaries including but not limited to a documentary where he actually went and saw the wreckage of the titanic and actually had a documentary about that all that type of stuff he also went to each or at least tried to go to the bottom of the uh the trench like the bot the biggest like the uh I don't even know what it's called. The the long the uh, deepest part of the ocean. He tried to go down the deepest part of the ocean with like a submarine and all that, and he documented that. And I don't understand. And I don't know exactly why he did this. Maybe it was to. 
I can only think of three reasons as to why he did all these documentaries in between Avatar 1 and Avatar 2. Number one, it was to create um, funding for Avatar The Way of Water. B, it was something that he wanted to do. Or C, it was something the studio made him do. I'm assuming that it was the first, a combination of the first two at least, because there is no way, like, after making couple of the highest grossing films of all time there is no way in hell james cameron would ever do anything for the studios that he would not want to do i, I don't know him personally but i get that vibe from him because he really loves the ocean he really loves the titanic that's the whole reason why he made the titanic is because he loved it and you know all that type of stuff so I assume that's what he wanted to do. Maybe it was just like breaks in between the creation of Avatar 2. He just decided, you know what, let's go get a documentary crew out to the bottom of the deepest part of the ocean. And let's just, let's just document it in between, you know, rendering for Avatar 2 or something. I don't, I don't know, but it's kind of interesting that he actually did this type of stuff. And one of those documentaries that actually was turned into kind of a six-episode miniseries was James Cameron's Story of Science Fiction. That actually premiered in 2018. I think I already mentioned that. And it accompanied with this book and all that. And the documentary itself, I will kind of... It's kind of interesting because the documentary... It intercuts in between um, James Cameron interviewing some of his peers, and we'll get to his peers later. But interviewing one of interviewing you know maybe one or two of his peers, and then other people that really study like sci-fi and all that type of stuff, like intercut in between like you know floating head interviews with like random people and all that that James Cameron did not I don't think documented or you know asked the questions or anything like that with some other person which was kind of weird I mean yeah we get some more in-depth knowledge about it but I kind of wanted to see more of the James Cameron interviewing these people that made all these fantastic sci-fi films and modern day sci-fi films at that but yeah and speaking of that it goes hand in hand with the book and i said we get into the uh who he interviewed so he interviewed some of the biggest directors in sci-fi in modern day Except for uh, Denis Villeneuve, who made uh, Arrival and all that at the time. He, of course, he would direct Dune, but I don't know why James wouldn't get him to do it. I don't know. But it's mostly, I have a feeling it's mostly his friends and connections that he had within the industry. Like, for instance, Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo del Toro has a huge, like, a uh, interview in here. There's George Lucas, there's Christopher Nolan, there's Ridley Scott, there's Steven Spielberg, and then there's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, if you know anything about science fiction, you kind of under you kind of hear all these names, and one of them is not like the others. Now, here's the thing, right? All these filmmakers have made just absolutely amazing sci-fi films like Steven Spielberg. I mean, what am I supposed to say here? Okay. He created, he directed E.T., Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Minority Reports. I mean, all these fantastic sci-fi films. Guillermo del Toro has made some of the biggest mo monster movies of all time, like right now, like uh, Pan's Labyrinth. The Shape of Water, you know? All these beautiful, amazing sci-fi films. Christopher Nolan, he made Inception. 
He made Interstellar. Need I go on? Ridley Scott, he directed Blade Runner and all these other films. But, and George Lucas, I mean, of course, Star Wars. I mean, what, what, <laughs> duh. But, there's a weird co correlation here with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, he was the Terminator, and he was in Predator, but he uh, never, uh, to my knowledge, he never directed anything. And he was mostly known for his acting. And no disrespect to Arnold Schwarzenegger, okay? He's a great guy. He's a fabulous actor. I mean, in the movies he's in, he's absolutely fantastic. But it's just kind of weird that he that James would um, interview Arnold instead of another director, I guess. But maybe that's me just that's me just nitpicking because honestly, I could talk listen to them talk all day because it's just that compelling. Now let's specifically talk about this book and the way I want book club to kind of go is I want to tell the story and I kind of want to detail like how it's written and all that. But since this is kind of a non-fiction book, surprisingly because it's, you know, sci-fi, non-fiction, whatever, it's just a bunch of interviews. It th we're kind of gonna skip the plot aspect of it and kind of give you the overall layout of the book. So basically, what happens is in this book, there are specific sections, and it starts with like I guess you can call it a preface, like a preface that introduces the section of sci-fi that we're gonna dive into. Like, for instance, monsters, like the Frankenstein monster, or werewolves and vampires and all that stuff. And the and the, um, the interview that we talked, the interview that we uh, kind of highlight on for this section is Guillermo del Toro, because he's made a lot of monster films and all that type of stuff. It's kind of stuff like that, and it happens in each and every section. Where we get like a specific um, director who's kind of has his or her own niche in sci-fi, like Christopher Nolan's big, huge time person in film. If you don't know Christopher Nolan films, I mean, time is a huge thing in his films. And we get, like, this section, like, this preface before we get into the actual interview with uh, time travel and the history of time travel and sci-fi and books and movies and all that type of stuff. And we also get, surprising enough, a interview <clears throat> by, G or, you know, by James Cameron. Like, someone actually interviews James Cameron in his whole stuff with sci-fi and all that type of stuff. Since it's basically his book, you know, might as well, you know, pick the mind of his sci-fi brain and all that type of thing. And I gotta tell you, this is the stuff that I wanted to see out of the documentary, okay? I don't want all these other people talking about, you know, sci-fi and all that type of thing. I get why they're there, but I didn't really want to talk or see these other people i want to see these creators talking about you know their niche in sci-fi and the big directors and all that and their interviews are actually extended from the documentary itself like i noticed that there's some overlap a little bit but then there are some like extended parts like it goes on for like pages and pages on steven spielberg and christopher nolan all that type of stuff and it really they really dive into the psyche of how they created these films and what inspired them to create these films they also have a lot of art like this art in this book is just a geek lover's dream okay there's sketches for um, like in James Cameron's interview, there's sketches for the giant robot thing in Avatar, 
in uh, Guillermo del Toro's thing, there's sketches for that hand monster thing from Pan's Labyrinth and all that type of thing. It's just so, like, mmm. And they dive so hard into sci-fi. Like, for instance, Christopher Nolan, in his interview, he talks a lot about Logan's run, and he talks a lot about Westworld and all that type of stuff, and how, I guess, that inspired a lot of his films and the way he created certain aspects of the way he created films and all that type of stuff. And it's just... It's so jam-packed with sci-fi knowledge. It's so jam-packed with all this nerdum stuff that I, I can't help but love this novel. And I even have to admit, I kind of chuckled a couple times with some of the interviews. Like, you can tell that James... All these people are James's friends. Like, for instance, the Arnold interview. I really got a lot... I'm not... Again, I'm not dissing Arnold in being in this book. I just... And I got a lot out of his interview with James Cameron. But he also... They were also kind of joking around about how Junior kind of was a science fiction film where he was pregnant and all that. And they were kind of like, yeah... That, I just kind of chuckle when that he brought that up. But anyway, though, this book is solid okay if you are a sci-fi lover i highly recommend this book it is so just beautiful it's just the i i don't really want to call it this but it's like the bible for sci-fi fans okay it's just mm, it's so perfect it's got books book recommendations from all these sci-fi nerds i mean if they can make sci-fi I mean, anyone can make sci-fi. They're just... As long as you have talent and all that, of course, too. But, yeah. But, anyway, though. I would... I, I highly recommend it. I would put this as a read. Guys, read this novel. You will not be disappointed. I find more things every time I just hop back into this. And my book is kind of messed up from the years I've been carrying around my backpack. <clears throat> but anyway, though, guys, that's it for this episode or this rendition, this time of book club. Thank you guys so much for listening. You guys want to recommend any books to your fellow club members, please let me know. Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe, ring that bell. More vids coming your way, and hey, Take care, guys.